Jag tror att det är den här Kotten äh, Lamma som ska till det. Okay, so to be better safe than sorry, I will repeat the answer to Kalle. And uh, when equations get very complicated, and uh, as we usually say, mathematics gets very abstract, it is so much harder to understand that these things were once upon a time learned with a great struggle. And I took the example, in order to be a math teacher, even for young pupils. And uh, it's a very good example there because Wittgenstein never got any education for his friends. He did not understand it. And uh, he never learned any school children, any mathematics at all. Instead, he traumatized them. But you need uh, to understand it's a doing. When you approach children, you need to do the mathematics. And your explanations have to do with your own voice and your own body. You need to go down to that level. You cannot be on that high level. So abstract thinking is nothing else but very, very complex, complex and complicated manual doings. And that is actually also the same on Make of Johnson and Barbara Tversky. It showed it's more complex and Barbara Tversky, she noted uh, when studying people who made complex understanding of engines, their hand movements were much more complicated and somebody who tried to understand maybe a simple problem of understanding where to go in a, uh, in a city, how do you take the tram, or how do you pay your bills. These things demanded more manual skill, which can be obviously shown uh, when she filmed them uh, unawares. The first question. Oedipus. He cannot escape his destiny. As you said, his destiny is part of the eschatological idea. It's unavoidable. It's already there at the very onset. It's a bit like uh, the Big Bang that gives the classical laws that leads to the Big Crunch. It is built in. It's a full circle. It's very Greek. The whole Oedipus is completely Greek and so much used by Freud. Freud was also of the eschatological idea that knowledge stops here. I understand everything in this instance. It's without time, without space. It happens directly. I would say there's no exaggeration to say that that is how Freud uh, took understanding to be directly, without any lapse, without any skill. And of course, the modern educational system with a high complication makes us think that there are things, there are skills that are highly abstract and doesn't take manual labor. No, no, no. Paul Feyerabend and show to that. And I would say it's more or less proven by Lake of Johnson. Without doing it, you don't understand it. You can imitate it, yes. And I think that happens within the modern educational system. We now got a lot of people who can imitate concepts. They can make a, a sort of skilled language game, how it sounds to be educated. But that doesn't mean that they really, really know how to do it. It's not internalized. It's not in their hands. Yes, it could take, it could take time before you realize this, but it's a huge difference. One is in reality, the other one is nowhere close to reality. Because reality is in the act, it's in the doings. It's when we interact with the world 
it's when we interpenetrate, it's when we touch, uh, it's when we reach out to the exterior as to make us more interior. We get our soul from understanding the outside. It's not separable. It's my answer to that. I, I pressed this before, it's very important to understand these mistakes could not have happened in the Middle Ages. And I would say not even the Renaissance. But now with the advancement of education, and as I mentioned, uh, uh, Kant grew up in the, in the first society on earth that had uh, compulsory school. So you have to learn uh, these things pretty early on. And I think at the age of five or six you learn mathematics. Then you forget the strife you did. And you forget that the act you do is something that you manually, by interacting, learn. Either by counting apples, pears, whatever they were, sheep, dogs. And you forget that. And then the whole problem with transparency, the whole problem with transcendentalism stops. And then the confusion stops. And this is what Wittgenstein wants to show us. Uh, like the fly out of the bottle. Show the way out of this. Show us how we can understand something really down to the bottom. And in this aspect, he shares his uh, understanding with Heidegger and Derrida. Derrida was, on the contrary, as many people think, a very practical person. He knew that writing a text takes skill, and it's a bit of a cheat to play all your contradictions. You need to really describe something. You need to go into the text when you read as well and not diminish it to contradictions. I think I better end there. I'm um, so sad about the sound quality, but I'm really happy that we had happy that we had a successful day today. Thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you.